Okay, so now we're going to move on to the four of wands. And with the number four uh, comes a whole different thing. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about it in the previous video. Uh, the number four is the first number below the dreaded abyss. The abyss is that um, kind of imaginary space, that imaginary divide between real and unreal. Um, it is that which most greatly separates us from God, um, and yet uh, does not really uh, exist in some ways. Um, the abyss is, is associated often with the Sephirah Da'at, which is knowledge, and Da'at uh, is always called the imaginary Sephirah. You know, it exists, but it doesn't really. It's the initial child of Hokama and Bina. It's their initial union. It's very strange. Da'at is a very bizarre thing, and I, I often ignore Da'at entirely. But it does. Uh, it is something that is relevant. Um, but the, the abyss is, is really that big uh, gap that exists between the ideal world of the supernal triangle and everything else that we experience below the, the supernal triangle. So from the number four on down in any suit, things really uh, go to hell in a handbasket for almost every suit. Um, as we go down the tree of life, in a very platonic sense, the farther away we get from the pure source of God, the more degraded, the heavier things become, the, uh, the less pure they become, and therefore the more capacity for evil there is, uh, evil, there is in, uh, in these cards. The, the greater there is a, a chance for deviation from the original nature, and therefore, and which, which is the definition of evil or the definition of sin, you know, to be something that one is not is, is the definition of, of disobedience and sin, really. Um, so, uh, with the number four, we talked about in the previous video how four is all about structure, organization, um, masculine rulership, that sort of thing, and the idea of chesed, which is mercy uh, and benevolence. So all of the fours are usually very peaceful, very um, placid. Uh, and with the four of wands, uh, we get finally the idea, whatever was come up with in the supernal triangle for, through the ace through the three, whatever Bina became pregnant with, is finally made into something. The work has been completed. That which was desired to be created is done, hence why it is called the Lord of Completion. Um, and it is Venus and Aries, which is a very interesting combination. Um, Venus uh, is usually not uh, a, a, an energy that I would consider happy in Aries. Uh, Venus being very feminine, very delicate, very gentle, very much about emotions and love. Um, Aries being all about conquest and masculine energy. So it, it, it's the two are very polar energies, um, which is why I, I think it's important that Lady Frida Harris on this card um, has the, the wands have opposite, those two energies on their opposite ends. You know, each wand is balanced with one dove on the end to represent Venus and a ram's head at the other end to represent Aries, of course. Um, and the whole thing represents a balance between those two energies. Um, the f this being the, the greatest four of the deck, um, being of the first suit, the, uh, the Yod suit, uh, fire, uh, it is the purest idea of four. And so we see that uh, not only has something been made, something has been manifest, but that which is manifest is a, a, a happy, healthy balance of masculine and feminine energies cooperating peacefully. Um, and in a way that is actually kind of beautiful. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, beauty associated with this card because of the strong Venusian element. Uh, <laughs> I love that word. Um, and that's, of course, why we have the, the really strong green background of this to really represent the uh, strength of Venus in this. And I, I always associate this card with, and, and really one through four, and one, one through five, on, on, in, this, in the wand suit, I kind of associate with the story of creation from, from Genesis. Um, 
you know, one through three is all about the actual plan to make creation, you know, the desire to make creation followed by the actual fertilization, the actual this is going to happen in the three. Um, and with the four, we kind of get the moment when God rests from his labor and says, that which I have made is good. And nothing is really happening yet. You know, um, existence is sort of just there. And it looks really nice. It's peaceful. It's a beautiful thing, uh, etc. And it isn't until we get the five that we really get something happening. And the five is so important for every suit uh, because it keeps things going. But anywho, so, um, so with the four divinatorily, um, I often get the four just to represent the completion of a project. The, fours, the four of wands is very straightforward. Um, all the wands are very straightforward because they are the purest suit. Um, there isn't a lot of, uh, of confusion involving the wands. It's a very simple idea. Um, so, so it does represent the uh, finalization of something. Uh, it, it, it's it's the manifestation of something. You know, something that uh, that Aquarian has wanted to put into action has finally been done. It's it's done. It's finished. It is out there and it is ready to be uh, kind of torn apart and and new things are able to happen to it now. Um, it is no longer necessarily in the possession of just that individual. Now we have the idea of divisibility. And so now that idea that the artist has come up with is subject to the opinions of others. Other people can work with it and do with it as they want. It is no longer just under the jurisdiction of the original creator. And so this is how we get, you know, chaos and anarchy, which are necessary to the continuation of creation. Um, so yeah, um, that's about it for the four. The next one we'll move on to the five.